cheer. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Eleanor, and everybody that's uh, worked hard to get us to this point. It's very exciting to be uh, here at our first first event. We did have a very successful mini symposium on campus this morning uh, with some excellent talks and, and good attendance to perhaps officially start Canoe. But I say now this is really the official beginning and uh, it's amazing to see everybody here, amazing to hear uh, all the conversation that's been going since the minute I saw you know, people involved show, start to show up here yesterday at the hotel. So I thought I was going to have to give some sort of motivational speech, but clearly I don't need to be a motivational speaker at all because there's plenty of, of motivation amongst everybody. And so um, that's something that you know, I'm going to try to endeavor to keep as we go forward. It's, it's a big challenge. I, I think probably everybody recognizes that uh, you know, it's, it's certainly a risk to try to bring a lot of people together, having their own successful careers, their own interest across diverse areas, but uh, it's definitely worth a try, and I think everybody agrees that it's, it's worth a try to do this. So um, we will um, try through Canoe to you know, impart some good structure, some, some good leadership, and you know, first and foremost, just try to create opportunities, opportunities that we didn't have before through this, uh, and, and through that, realize lots of success and um, hopefully growth uh, and times beyond our first five years of, of, of funding through CIHR. Uh, so, um, of course, this is much a motherhood statement that, that's up here in terms of a, a, a bold vision. It's definitely not a vision that, that Canoe itself could could say is its own. It's probably something we could certainly all identify with in terms of you know research and scientific understanding, um, the urban environment, which I think you know really CIHR was really bang on and, and sort of picking that as one of their nexus areas uh, of focus in the signature initiatives of health and environment because um, it, it is so integrative, it is so important uh, to, to our health. Uh, and so it's such an exciting area to work on even if we keep it just within the physical environment aspects of it, although we can't keep ourselves that blinded, it's certainly a much broader system that we're, we're dealing with. But you know, we're hoping that the outcomes will be more cost-effective measures for promoting healthy development throughout the life course, um, that chronic disease burdens can be reduced through uh, intelligent um, reshaping of, of our cities or growth of our cities, uh, and in terms of changing environments, I think we're all um, seeing globally the impacts of how the climate's changing, seeing things right in our own backyards, how the climate's changing, uh, and expecting many changes ahead, whether they be uh, from the physical environment, from climate change, or, or things that are done through the social environment, or other aspects that humans will be doing in terms of, of change. Uh, and so <clears throat> we need to be out in front of that as much as we can, and I, and I think Canoe can play a role there. Now, how did we get here, or how did I get here in this, this situation of, of standing up here? Well, um, you know, th at least throughout my career in, um, in Environment Canada, where I come from, um, uh, I have good exposure to a wide range of, uh, of researchers uh, and have, you know, in my background in air quality, at least some people know me as, as working in that area to some extent. And just within my own you know, little world, I would co constantly see, uh, you know, new people coming from the health research, the medical research area saying, I want to do more related to the environment. I'd like more environment of data. Where can I get that? Who's doing this? And, and it was happening over and over and, and more and more. Um, and, it's, and it just seemed like, uh, eventually it would come back to the same people um, being recommended. Uh, and, and so as CIHR was uh, looking at uh, ways to enhance data platforms uh, um, as part of their signature initiative, they uh, you know, were looking at, at how they might do that. And, and I put up the, the, I thought, perhaps crazy idea, but I thought I put it in the table that why don't we have people working together at the start as opposed to at the end. And they liked that. and. Um, Thought they would spend half the money on that, I think, at first, and the other half on individual projects. And eventually, by the time they developed the program, uh, well past the workshop where I put that idea up there, uh, they'd had all of their budget 
uh, put into this this initiative, and this is this is not all of the signature initiative budget, but it's the the Institute for Cardiovascular and Respiratory Health's uh, budget. They thought they would put towards this, uh, and um, that's that's brought us to here to try to give it a shot to see how uh, all of us can try to move things along much faster than we could individually. Um, the um, you know the, the the key thing, of course, is that. Uh, it takes time and in patience and hopefully drawing the right connections. And we're off to a great start, no question, in terms of who signed up, who expressed an interest before even the canoe proposal was put in. Uh, and so I'm really grateful for everybody who's shown that support and interest. But at this, at this point in time, I think almost all the provinces are rep represented. As far as I know, right now we, we don't have anyone uh, from Saskatchewan um, or, or PEI. I, I certainly have a colleague who's at the university in PEI who I think will be uh, involved soon. But we're missing those, those two provinces. Um, but 117 registered members on the website, 20 universities across the country uh, represented and probably all here, at least one person. At least 14 government agencies at all levels of government from municipal up up to federal and multiple departments uh, are on our list of uh, people that are interested in canoe and, and signed on to canoe at the stage. Um, and hard to count, but you know, on the order of five institutes or other consortia or ENGOs as well. And uh, many have primary appointments in hospitals or uh, have secondary appointments in hospitals. So certainly in terms of uh, the medical community and, and working in, in hospitals as well, uh, we're, we're connected through their, this stage. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, at, at this starting point and you know certainly hoping to grow and bring in the right expertise of people who want to contribute more. We've got um, members from the U.S. I think at least four states perhaps more um, at this stage and lots of conversation with colleagues in the in the U.S. about uh, uh, you know, their interests, how we can think about viewing not not just Canada but at least North America wide and some of the work we're doing if possible uh, as as something that's not too far-fetched to be trying to do. And at this stage, while we've certainly had lots of, we had letters of support from our international colleagues, and we've um, had, I think, this, this event and our symposium uh, broadcast uh, and people internationally signing into it, at this stage sort of officially were represented within CANOE with, with a member from Sweden and from the Netherlands. Um, and in terms of the, the initial support, as I mentioned, the initial support was for $4.2 million uh, over five years from the Canadian Institutes for Health Research, uh, largely driven uh, by the Institute for Cardiovascular uh, and Respiratory Health. And uh, I, I believe Diane Forbes is here from CIHR. There's, there's Diane Forbes over there, so thank you very much for coming, and thank you very much so far for being a supporter of, of this, this effort. Um, and they're certainly a key player in getting us going. I want to certainly acknowledge that we're based here at the Dalana School of Public Health at the University of Toronto, where I hold one of my appointments uh, at, at University of Toronto, but also uh, University of Victoria, where uh, more Eleanor Seton, who is uh, the managing director for CANOE, is based. So we have sort of two home institutes, which really helps anchor us on both sides of the country, almost both sides of the country. Uh, and, um, there is support coming via Health Canada funding to Stats Canada uh, to enable us to derive residential histories and do linkages uh, to environmental variables back in time in so much as we can possibly do that. And so that's a very important contribution that we want to capitalize on as, as much as we can. But of course, the, the, the amazing support from all of you to join now uh, and be here now and be part of the process of developing the proposal is what's, what's really taken us to this stage uh, and is going to take us to the next level. I want to acknowledge that um, in terms of the structure, and you'll learn more about how we've sort of set up CANOE from Eleanor uh, after me, but um, we have uh, an international advisory panel. Uh, um, that you can see listed here and also in, our, in, the, in the handouts, people's names are also listed. Uh, present are those that are underlined. Uh, uh, Professor Bert Brunekreef is, is here uh, from the Netherlands, right there. Bert, raise your hand, please. Um, uh, Professor Gordon McMain, right up here in the front. Um, and Diana Royce, also right up here at the front. 
our, our this is our, our inaugural advisory panel who's present. Some, some may be joining us on the phone at, at different times. Uh, and one of the Canupiais is, uh, is um, Professor Howard Hu, who is the, the Dean of Dalana School of Public Health, who is going to help lead this group to help lead us towards even greater successes. Now, our overarching objectives, also quite broad, but there are some key nuggets in there that we want to try to accomplish. In, in hopefully short order and then over the whole five years and beyond are, um, are outlined here. And these are taken largely from the proposal that was submitted uh, and which was responsive to what CIHR was looking for. And you know, one of the key things is to build a common harmonized data and methods platform of environmental exposure variables and broadly across the urban form environment. So that's, that's one thing that uh, I think you know, we're off to a good start. We'll hear more about that in the sessions this afternoon in terms of our various uh, teams who are, are sort of working uh, on, on, on a range of aspects of the urban environment. Um, you know, with all that information together, we don't want to look at it independently. We absolutely must look at it in an integrated manner, and that's a huge challenge. Uh, and that's something that with, with who we have uh, as part of CANOE, we, we surely are going to be able to take some good steps forward in trying to understand how to bring a range of different aspects of the urban environment, beneficial, detrimental to health, some happening now, some happening through, how we're going to bring those together to provide uh, a, a broad picture of what health, a healthy city looks like and how we can get there. That, that's a big challenge, but we certainly in, in, the, in the, these five years are going to make steps in that area uh, to ultimately be really identifying, you know, what is the ideal health-promoting urban form uh, for Canadian urban and suburban areas and even further outlying areas in so much as it's possible. But, you know, that's for today, but also we're looking ahead to tomorrow. Uh, and that clearly brings in, again, the changing environment that we know we're experiencing, whether it be responses to try to mitigate climate change, which will lead to changes, or the climate change effects itself. Um, so, you know, certainly one of the key things for all of this is going to be contributions from our members, all riding in boats. And everyone has a role. That's one of the criteria for joining, is, is there are no freeloaders. Uh, you've got to be uh, able to hold a paddle and, and take us forward one way or another. I don't think we really have any problem with that. We also want to have common goals, so we're not going in opposite directions. Uh, we also want to be thinking about, well, with that, we can certainly get there much more efficiently. Uh, we might be in our own boats going in the same direction, but if we can really try to team up across disciplines and with some common goals, uh, it's really going to take us much, much further. So there's my little motivational part with, with canoes. So I think one of the biggest motivations for me is, is that this really, I think, is, is a unique opportunity. Um, this, this is arguably the first time that there's there is considerable support from the CIHR to be doing work that's emphasizing the exposure side of the equation. Now, we're not totally exposure at all, but um, we certainly have uh, support now to be working in this area, advancing this area, making it widely available. Uh, and that's always, that's been hard to do in the past. It's always been, you know, what's your health question? What's your health study? Uh, How is that designed? Um, you know, what's your, what's your um, if it is uh, an epidemiologic study or, or a study that is, involves the environment, then, then there's, you know, the question about what is the environment and how are you doing it. But, you know, there's always been more of the effort on the budget on the health study and not on really drilling down deeper and deeper into the exposure part. And I think we have the opportunity now here and the, and the people here to, to do more than, than um, um, another health study to really focus on the exposure part. Uh, and we have to seize that opportunity, no question about it. And we'd have the wealth of expertise here and uh, online uh, and new members to be coming into Canoe, new partners coming into Canoe, I think, to be really taking that forward. And hopefully that's another thing that motivates us all, is, is the new connections that we're going to be able to make as things go forward. Uh, and that's going to help us be more efficient in our work. 
um, it's unique in that, that we know, we hear it all the time, there's, there's many challenges facing our cities as they're growing and um, growing just at their natural rate, but probably even faster as, as more and more new Canadians come and locate in urban areas. They're becoming um, you know, our, 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 our primary source of, of everything that we have, econ economics, leisure, life, living, it's all, all there in cities. And that's certainly, I think, a very relevant area for us to be working in. And many, many research questions, and also many engaged knowledge users, and more, I think, as we go forward. Now, I think there are big value added that we want to make sure that we realize from, from this consortium. And I think we're going to be able to do this, and it's going to benefit you know, Canadian environmental health research broadly in terms of being able to collectively take stock and more efficiently strategically move forward from there and taking stock of our information. I think that's going to help you know, increase the impact of our science and our knowledge translation. It's going to definitely increase capacity. There aren't a lot of students in the room right now, but that's certainly our next step is to get students involved and engaged in working on projects and meeting each other and meeting us and getting experience with other disciplines as well. And that's going to, I think, go a long way to increasing the capacity for the thoughts about bringing health into uh, urban environmental work. Uh, there is a great potential for more integrated analyses uh, across multiple aspects, uh, with some of the heavy lifting being done collectively to bring the data together and, and critically think about whether that data is at the, of the quality that we need to ask the, the questions that remain for us to be researching on. Uh, and um, there are another number of activities that are right under the Signature Initiative CHR in Environment and Health that uh, are asking similar questions to the types of questions that Canoe has or the types of data that Canoe is pulling together. So we can, we can help enhance those efforts as well. So these are big wins for a Canadian environmental health research. Um, you know, individually, uh, hopefully, we're also all going to see success. And that's certainly, you know, uh, the biggest challenge is how do we keep everybody engaged? How does everybody get something out of this? We can't divide the money by all the number in this room or even half the number in this room and do anything substantive. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to be working together uh, to to have the impact, and that's certainly overall going to increase productivity, but individually we have to find ways that it also increases individuals' productivity. I think we're up to that challenge to be able to do that uh, at, in terms of, you know, one area being um, publications, another area may be productivity and be able to attract more funds, uh, but, you know, this is all going to be something that I think would be better enabled with more connections across disciplines that we, we can help foster. So we're certainly trying to be an enabler. Canoe is not something that we're, we're trying to become the, 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 the one place that gets all the recognition. It's, I really want this to be something that enables everybody more uh, and they see that they get something out of it uh, that's contributing to science, contributing to, to having impact as well. So if we can collectively tackle larger problems and take advantage of opportunities uh, because of our critical mass, then we, I'm sure we can have a higher impact than individually. Um, and this is going to be, I think, a good base to leverage for more funding, and we'll definitely be always looking for those opportunities. So, this is the research agenda that was laid out in terms of the exposure areas. Uh, you can see them there. We're going to hear from people in these different areas. We have uh, certainly a need to be thinking about uh, developing and applying new methods, uh, and so not relying on what's there so far, but looking at what critically needs to be improved and what are their priorities. Uh, fill those gaps uh, in, in short order. Leverage across activities. Uh, and convergence is sort of a word that just keeps popping into my head when I, I see what different groups are doing and have that can be brought together to, to I think, take us to new, new levels and new steps, whether it be new technologies or, or new data sets. Uh, there is incredible opportunities uh, for convergence, more than we can even imagine in terms of the opportunities. And that's, I, I think, no question going to lead to Canadian first and worldwide first. So I'm convinced we have the critical mass of people and knowing 
probably only half the people in this room, I, I, I know the diversity of, of uh, expertise that's here, and I you know, have, have heard the excitement uh, and the exchanges that are already happening. So I think we, we have the critical mass uh, and will continue to gain more critical mass, and that's going to allow us to really think about these, these challenging connections that Mike Brower talked about a lot this morning at, at the symposium on campus, in terms of connections across transportation, land use, and, and noise pollution. And these are just, just small examples of the connections that people are working on and that we can hopefully advance even further. You know, across greenness, ecosystem and social services, walkability and climate resilience. You know, we know, we, I think we all know this, I'm probably preaching to the, to the choir here in terms of these sorts of connections, uh, which hopefully is gonna lead to something that can be applied in terms of helping advise uh, the people right there who are, are working on uh, developing uh, strategies to allow our cities to grow in a, in a healthy way. Um, you know, examples I see in terms of convergence are talking to our transportation group and, and they say, well, we're, you know, we're busy looking at developing apps and smartphone tracking systems to, to get brand new data that takes us beyond phone surveys for getting travel demand information. Uh, and how can we get that into being used for health? And then you hear from, from the, the health groups that we've got these cohorts that are prospective and we could be gathering more data from them. And these are, these are sort of disparate things that we can you know, bring together and connect or converge uh, to lead to new paradigms and data collection using the latest technologies uh, are, are some examples. Uh, as are examples in the ongoing cohorts that we have and bringing in more on walkability, but with some of them having uh, ability to approach them and do more measurements, we can try to improve these measures further, understand these connections from ecological measures of potential uh, physical activity to true physical activity, and, and perhaps build upon some of the amazing things that uh, Gillian Booth talked about this morning at the symposium. Uh, or the uh, efforts that are being done at the uh, Population Health Research Institute to, to, to be on the ground in many places across Canada to, to administer the EPOC survey, uh, but also ideas coming forward in terms of using Google Street View. So we've got different ways to gather that information that we can bring together and converge. Many different opportunities to, to, to I think, move forward here. And finally, just to close in terms of going back to um, translating our knowledge and getting it out there for use. This is just um, uh, a, sh a sh few snippets from, from papers that were things I picked up often just left in the subway when I'm trying to kill time on the GO train or when I'm traveling and I actually have the luxury to have a newspaper and look at it a little bit. Uh, but these were things that were out in the press in this area just in October in terms of talking about uh, transportation, issues around the Golden Horseshoe and how to grow that, or uh, issues around um, the green belt that's been set up here and, and planners having different ideas than, than the developers have uh, and not really seeing eye to eye, or um, densification in Vaughan and connecting that to the transit hub and what it's doing for, for uh, property values and where, where people want to be. But one of the things that really struck me at the end was up there in the upper left was a little pros and cons table of pros and cons of densification that was published in one of the articles. And I don't expect you to be able to read it, even blown up. But my point is, is that you go through the pros and cons that were listed there of intensification, and they're all great, valid points. But not one of them is talking about health. And that's something that we need to be able to change you know, with, with good, solid information. I think it's certainly doable, uh, and I think there's clearly an appetite for continuing to have these sorts of discussions and bring health in there more and more. Uh, and so hopefully, I will be able to start doing those through Canoe in short order. Uh, and with that, I want to uh, end here. I really, really appreciate everybody being here, uh, being part of this, putting your uh, trust in me and trying to uh, uh, lead us along towards a bigger whole. I, I hope that uh, this is just the beginning of much, much more that, that, that we'll be doing in terms of exchange. It was essential that we be together face to face for this first time so that we could all meet and see that, that this canoe is not a virtual watercraft. It's actually something that's real uh, and that we can all uh, be happy that we're part of and see that we see ourselves and that we're going to get some things out of that. So I want to thank everybody very much to this point and I'm hoping that we're going to have uh, lots of great ideas exchanged and we're going to find ways to make it all happen as we go forward after this day and a half. So thanks again.